Please give the question some thought before listening on. In order to complete part A, which is to consider whether the force exerted by friction is equal to mu k times mg, we want to first draw a free body diagram of the block. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the gravitational force acting downward on the block, the surface pushing upward on the block, which is called the normal force. We have the kinetic frictional force pointing to the left. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it is right there. And then we have the applied constant force, which we can label F acting at an angle to the horizontal. So as always, after drawing a free body diagram, we are going to want to apply Newton's second law. And in particular, we're going to apply Newton's second law to the y direction first. So let's go ahead and write out Newton's second law for the y direction, which would simply be the sum of the forces that are acting in the y direction equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Now presumably the block is actually not accelerating either upward or downward. So in other words, the acceleration in the y direction is zero meters per second squared. So if we substitute zero in for a y, we're actually going to be able to say that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times zero, which of course would be zero. And so that's key to this question. Now let's consider the forces acting in the y direction. We have the normal force, the gravitational force, and then we have to be careful about the applied force. We need to make sure that we break it up into its x component, which points to the right, and its y component, which points upward. Let's go ahead and label that y component as f times the sine of theta, and then the x component will be f times the cosine of theta. So right now we're looking at y forces, so let's go ahead and add f sine theta into our analysis. So taking the sum of the forces in the y direction, we would have the following. Notice that for mg we included a negative sign in front of it because that force is pointing downward. Now why don't we go ahead and solve this for the normal force, which will be useful to us later when we calculate the kinetic frictional force. So we would have to add mg to both sides and then subtract f sine of theta. So here is our expression for the normal force. And now we're prepared to answer part A of this question. Let's go ahead and consider the kinetic frictional force, the friction, and then we'll determine whether it's equal to this expression here. So the formula for kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, multiplied by the normal force. Now we just determined an expression for the normal force, so we can substitute that in here for n. And when doing so, we can see that the kinetic frictional force is not, in fact, equal to mu k times mg. So that answers part of part A, and then we can actually calculate the force exerted by friction by substituting in the known values for, for mu k, m, g, f, and theta. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then plugging that all into the calculator yields 4.2 newtons. So part A is solved. Let's move on to part B and determine how much work is done by the friction force and also by F. Now work is defined by the following equation. Notice that we enclose the force and the displacement in an absolute value sign and that theta is going to be the angle between the force and the displacement. And sometimes that angle can be tricky to determine, as we will see. We can calculate the force done, excuse me, the work done by friction first by plugging in the frictional force, the displacement, and then the angle between the frictional force and the displacement. Keep in mind that the displacement of the box points to the right, but the frictional force is pointing against that direction, to the left. So the angle between the frictional force and the displacement would actually be a full 180 degrees. So that's the angle that we'll use when plugging into the work formula for friction. So there are the known values for the frictional force, the displacement, and the angle. And the calculator yields an answer of negative 16.9 newtons. Let's also calculate the work done by the force F. 
Now we notice that, again, the displacement points to the right. The force F is acting at a 37 degree angle to that displacement. So we have to make sure to use 37 degrees for that calculation of work. Let's go ahead and fill in the values. And the calculator shows us that the work done by the applied force F is 47.9 joules. I should note that the unit for work is joules. I did not note that earlier and may have mistaken, mistakenly used newtons. But of course, the unit for work is joules. Part C is a conceptual point and does not require any calculations, and here is the key concept. The forces that do not do any work on the mass are the forces that are perpendicular to the direction of the displacement. Perpendicular to the direction of the displacement. Very important phrase there when determining which forces do not do any work. So for example, the normal force points straight up the displacement points to the right, as we've noted earlier, and we can see from that that those two directions are perpendicular. Basically, they form a 90 degree angle. So anytime a force and the displacement form a 90 degree angle, the work done is zero. You can also see that from the formula for work, because the angle in this case would be 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. So that would render the work also equaling zero joules. Similarly, mg, which points downward is perpendicular to the displacement. So a 90 degree angle would yield a value of zero joules for the work done by the gravitational force. And then the vertical component of F, which we labeled as F sine of theta, that pointed straight up, and that also forms a perpendicular angle, a 90 degree angle, I should say, with, with the displacement. So the work done by that force is also zero.